Hi friends. In this video, we are discussing about another obstetrical emergency that is shoulder dystocia. So here we can see the head has delivered and the shoulder is still inside the maternal pelvis. So this is the shoulder dystocia actually. The head will come out but the shoulder will get caught inside the pelvis that is known as the shoulder dystocia. Now let us see the exact definition of shoulder dystocia. That is the impaction of fetal shoulders in maternal pelvis. It will get caught inside the maternal pelvis. Now let us see the risk factors for the shoulder dystocia. First one is maternal diabetes mellitus. In the case of maternal diabetes mellitus, naturally the size of the baby will be more or there is a chance for fetal macrosomia. And when the size of the baby is more, naturally the shoulder by acromion diameter also will be more. So it will be difficult for a big baby to pass through or big shoulder to pass through the pelvis. And next one is short structure. If the size of the lady is less small, for example, if the size of the lady is less than 5 feet, naturally her pelvic capacity also will be less. Or we can expect a narrow pelvis in that case. So through a narrow pelvis, even if the shoulder diameter is normal or even if the baby is having normal size also, if the pelvis is small, there is a chance for dystocia. Next one is fetal macrosomia. Fetal macrosomia, the reason already we have seen, large shoulder will be there. Biochromian diameter will be more than 10 cm. Next one is post-term pregnancy. That is if the pregnancy is getting extended beyond 40, 40 weeks. Naturally, when the age is advancing, the size of the baby also will increase. And we know that in the case of large size baby, it will be difficult for the shoulder to pass through. Next is obesity of the mother. If the mother is having obesity, there is a chance for fetal macrosomia. And this fetal macrosomia may lead to the shoulder dystocia. Next, fetal shoulder circumference. In some cases, maybe due to the genetics, or due to some other unknown reasons, large shoulder will be there for the baby. So the biochromian diameter will be more than 10 centimeter for such babies. And that shoulder also may get impacted. So these are the risk, fa risk factors for the shoulder dystocia. Now let us see how to diagnose the shoulder dystocia. First way, in the normal cases, normally after the delivery of the head, the shoulder will come out without any delay natural progress will be there. But here, there, there will be a delay in the delivery of the shoulder after the delivery of the head. And the second thing is, turtle sign will be there. All of you might have seen the turtle. And turtle is having a nature, whenever it is needed, it is having the capacity or it will just withhold its head inside. And it will go inside that complete cover. So here also, in the same way, the head of the baby will be looking as like it is trying to go or return back into the vagina and this is known as the turtle sign and it is because of the traction of the shoulder and if turtle sign is there surely you can suspect the shoulder dystocia and next we can see the management it's a short form we can summarize it in the uh, expansion of helper in that h st stands for help that is you should get the help of obstetrician and pediatrician if you are expecting a shoulder dystocia immediately you should hold, call for the help of these two persons and next is episiotomy you can just increase the episiotomy or liberalize the episiotomy so sometimes if it is due to the, if the dystocia is due to the perineal tissues it may get released and another one if you want to do the manipulative delivery for example for insert if you want to insert your fingers inside the vagina or if you want to insert your hands into the vagina in that cases more space will be available if you are just ex extending the episiotomy and next one is legs elevate the legs that is just do the hyperflexion of the uh, extremity especially the thighs towards the abdomen so that may release the pressure and next one is pressure, apply suprapubic pressure. And another one is E, E, e stands for enter into the vagina. Here we can see some of the maneuvers are written. I will be explaining it separately, Rubin's maneuver and Wood's screw maneuver. Here you can see the Mike Roberts maneuver. All those things I will be explaining later. And the next one is R, 
or that is for roll or remove the posterior arm it includes savanelli maneuver cleidotomy or symphysiotomy so let us see this maneuvers one by one now let us see what is mac roberts maneuver that is just a hyperflexion of the hips see this picture this will be the normal uh, flexed normally flexed hips this is the position we are maintaining for the delivery in the lithotomy position this will be the angle of flexion in, of the hips but here you will just flex the hips acutely towards the mother's abdomen see this angle of flexion you can see that is a hyperflexion of the hip so because of this hyperflexion what will happen means intrauterine pressure when it is getting compressed the pressure inside the uterine cavity will increase that pressure will that is from 1653 mm of mercury it will increase up to 3262 mm of mercury so when the pressure is increasing that pressure also will get applied over the baby and it may push the baby outside and next is increasing the amplitude of contractions the uterus uterine contractions will be there of course we know that during the process of labor uterine contractions will be there and when you are doing the hyperflexion of the extremity what will happen means the amplitude of this contractions will increase that is normally if 103 mm of mercury amplitude is there it will become 129 mm of mercury amplitude because of these two reasons the baby may come out when more pressure is getting applied from the back it may come out and another advantage when you are doing this hyperflexion there is a rotation in the angle of the pelvis here you can see the coccyx is here in this case here it is getting move it is moving upward same symphysis pubis is also tilting upward so this tilt may release the shoulder so these are the uh, reasons that will help for the release of the shoulder in the case of mac roberts maneuver so mac roberts maneuver means you are just doing the hyperflexion of the maternal hips <clears throat> next one is supra pubic pressure that is per abdominally you can apply pressure over the posterior shoulder you can apply pressure over the uh, posterior shoulder or you can apply supra pubic pressure so this will leads to this pressure over the shoulder will leads to the abduction of the shoulder and that may leads to the hyperflexion and that may decrease the by acromion diameter and it will help for the release of the shoulder next is rubin's maneuver in this rubin's maneuver what we are doing means you will just insert one hand into the vagina and using this hand you have to palpate the posterior shoulder see here you can see the shoulder you just palpate the shoulder palpate the back side of the shoulder and by using the hands just push on the shoulder or abduct the shoulder see in this way you are just abducting the shoulder this will release the shoulder if it is getting caught over there that is if it is in the anterior posterior diameter or in the transverse diameter it may bring the shoulder to the oblique diameter that is one advantage at the same time it will decrease the due to that abduction it will decrease the biacromian diameter also these two things may help for the release of the shoulder this is the rubin's maneuver by inserting a hand into the vagina you are just performing the flexion of the arm or shoulder next is woods cork screw maneuver in this case what we are doing means same way as like the previous thing we are just inserting hand into the vagina instead of applying pressure over the posterior aspect of the shoulder here you can see the fingers are pressed over the anterior aspect of the posterior shoulder over the chest region so by this pressure by exerting pressure over that shoulder you can just produce or you can just make the abduction of the shoulder abduction of the posterior shoulder so this abduction also will here you can see when when you are applying pressure anteriorly this will produce the abduction of the shoulder and this abduction will reduce the shoulder by acromion diameter and it helps for the delivery of the or for the expulsion of the baby next is delivery of the posterior arm uh, that maneuver is known as burnham maneuver here what we are doing means the examiner should insert or the examiner can insert one hand into the vagina hold the posterior hand here you can see this is the examiner's hand this is the baby's posterior hand posterior arm hold the posterior arm and sweep it across the anterior chest wall in this direction you can just sweep it and you can just take it out or you can manually help for the delivery of the posterior shoulder of course if the posterior shoulder is getting released the anterior shoulder will come out 
automatically. Next is Savanelli maneuver. In this case, if all these measures fails, already the head is outside and the shoulder is inside the pelvis. Here, what we will do means we will just reverse all the cardinal movements that has happened during the delivery of the head. That is, we are just rever reversing the crowning, restitution, internal rotation. By reversing all these things, we are just reinserting the head into the pelvis, keeping the baby back. And after reinserting, you can take the mother for the cesarean. Otherwise, if all these measures fails, you can go for the cleidotomy. Cleidotomy usually we will do in the case if the baby is not alive. If the baby is alive and if there is no other complication, we won't do go for that. But if the baby is not alive and if you are not expecting a survival of the baby, in that cases, you can just uh, do the, you can just fracture the anterior clavicle by pushing it against the pubic ramus. You can just fracture the clavicle when the clavicle is getting fractured or either you can cut it by using the scissors. When it is fractured, naturally the diameter will, diameter of the shoulder will decrease and it will help for the delivery of the baby. Otherwise, you can do the symphysiotomy. You can make an opening in over the symphysis pubis of the maternal pelvis. So through that way also, you can release the shoulder. So these are the measures you can perform or you can take for the releasing or for the delivery of the shoulder. Next, we can see the complications of the shoulder dystocia. We can, the complications we can divide into maternal complications and fetal complications. The maternal field complications include maternal morbidity. There is a chance for perineal lacerations, cervical and vaginal lacerations, chance for bladder injury, chance for postpartum hemorrhage, and there is a chance for endometritis also. When you are doing the repeated vaginal examinations, when you are inserting the hand into the vagina for different maneuvers, the, those things may lead to the infection of the uterine endometrium and postpartum hemorrhage reason it is due to the uh, prolongation of the labor. When the labor is getting prolonged, there is a chance for uterine inertia and that uterine inertia may produce the postpartum hemorrhage. And these lacerations, of course, when the shoulder is getting impacted, when you are taking the shoulder manually out, there is a chance for tear. Next, we can see the fetal complications. Chance for fetal morbidity. When the labor is getting prolonged, there is a chance for fetal hypoxia. Chance for brachial plexus injury. When you are trying to push the baby out, it may damage the brachial plexus. Chance for clavicular fracture, facial nerve paralysis. See, after the delivery of the head, if you are just trying to push the baby out by applying traction over the head, there is a chance for facial nerve paralysis, clavicular fracture and brachial plexus injury. And already I have told you that there is a chance for fetal asphyxia if the labor is getting prolonged. And there is a chance for central nervous system injury also. When you are applying pressure over the head, there is a chance for injury to the spine and brain. Thank you for watching this video. We will be meeting soon with the next video. Thank you.